I'm trying to stay as far from combat as I can in this one. Well, shucks. You mean I can't send you up there in the front line either? No. <laughs> no, this guy has a light blaster pistol that he'll probably shoot himself with before he does any damage to anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get experience points for that? I... <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll award special experience points for self-inflicted wounds. How does that sound? <laughs> All right, let's, um, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be, as I mentioned a minute ago, a, uh, a, a playthrough of the published materials that Fantasy Flights uh, 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 issued uh, for the Force and Destiny system. And over the course of the next few sessions, we'll work our way through... Uh, the stuff that came with the core game, the stuff that came with the GM screen, and, and then the beginning game eventually. Um, and so we be, we're beginning tonight with an adventure that's called Lessons from the Past. And we're also beginning with a new party. So let's, um, let's just go around, maybe starting with you, Dustin. You're the next one on the screen. And just tell us a little bit about uh, your character and yourself if you want to. And then we'll, we'll just kind of do that for each one of the players. Uh, well, don't really have too much to say about me. I've only been role playing for, I don't remember, ten or fifteen years. <laughs> and what's the number? The uh, character I'm playing is Shada Ka, a female Tagruta from Chile. I don't know really how to pronounce the name of their planet, but that's what I'm going with. Okay. Um, she's 28, and when she was 17, she left her planet because she felt a calling that she just had to answer, where she's just always eager to help people, and that's essentially all she does, is try to defend the weak, help the helpless, and, um, with that, she's had several different adventures in her lifetime, like, um, things I have wrote on here are... A few of the huts that were taking advantage of the weak and they're uh, enslaving the lesser races. She's helped fight for them. Uh, basic things like farmers with uh, any external issues like animals or mercenaries that may be taking up arms. Uh, and she's even protected people that the Black Sun was hunting. Things like anyone that any person that is innocent that needs help, she will defend. Um, and she met uh, Hetha on a on a mission on Naboo, and um, even though she tried to tell her tell her that she was force sensitive, Shada really doesn't believe in all that mumbo jumbo. You know, it's all in the skill. So she just quickly dismissed that. Uh, but they did become acquainted, and um, Hetha Hetha has uh, even helped her uh, locate people that need her help and um, she's developed some leadership skills uh, and uh, any able-bodied people that can assist her she will lead them so that they can help defend themselves and um, Hetha has also helped her get some material on ancient warlords or military leaders so that she um, can just have better knowledge of battlefield warfare. Um, she isn't part of the rebellion or anything, but um, some small rebel insurgences that may not be directly tied to the rebellion, she's helped them out a time or two or helped train them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and for her uh, force uh, morality... Uh, she's got bravery, where she will just uh, rush into combat, and uh, death is essentially an afterthought. But with that, she also has the anger issue. And any time someone dies on her watch or she fails, she really takes that to heart and uh, just becomes bitter and angry at herself more than anyone else. Okay. Very nice. Uh, does she have any force powers right now? Nope. No force powers because that's consistent, I guess, with your description. Yeah. Nice. All right. So not a believer yet. 
And uh, so, uh, I guess uh, Brad. But some things in my characters never changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I also have a Tegruda. He's male, 34 years old. And he was actually in the order. He was a youngling and he had just been accepted as a Padawan when Order 66 happened. So I've left that open to whatever you want to do with that, Matt, as to how he got away from that. But he's been in hiding since. Uh, maybe even Hetha was the one that helped him get away, and he may have been in contact with her for quite some time now. now yeah, that's a possibility for sure. Um, obviously, he does believe in the Force. Um He's basically been laying low and skulking around the outer rim, helping out here and there, but not really trying to draw any attention to himself. And Heth has finally convinced him to come out and, and get with the program here. He has uh, training in sense and heal harm. Very nice. Very nice. And what is his morality? Uh, compassion and hatred. Okay. Um, he always wants to help out. He seeks out those in need, but the flip side of that is he very easily... Yeah, supposed to be opposites. Like... Um, sees, sees the evil in people. So, like the Empire or any kind of oppressors, he... He's quick to judge, and he has a hard time believing that they can be redeemed. Very nice. Michael. Yes. A uh, little personal about me. I've been I've hit my 20-year mark in gaming. That's what's scary. Uh, <laughs> I've been gaming since I was 17. Um, my only real note is, unlike most gamers, I did not actually start uh, playing it started with D and D. I didn't start that till in like my mid twenties, and so where everybody usually gets in and goes from there. Um, I play all gamut: sci-fi, fantasy, uh, you know, D and D, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, Star Wars, Seven C. You name it. I, I'm I just go through a different type of deal, um, and. Uh, this is uh, my first time doing the, uh, the Force and Destiny, so I'm looking forward to kind of learning it for my, my benefit because I never really played too much with it uh, when I was running Star Wars before. Um, but I am playing Elias Azer. Um, Elias is was originally uh, born on Salakumai, however you want to pronounce that one. <laughs> the really tricky planet. That, we've encountered that planet in the Wayward Spirit campaign, I think, haven't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, we had the same issues with pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> and even when you watch Clone Wars, they they mess it up three times. Yeah. You know, so. Um, but he was he was born on Salakumai. Um, he was part of a or. He grew up kind of in a colonist migrant, uh, you know, fa farmers commune co-op type deal. Um, and he was born during the Clone Wars on the latter part uh, when the Separatists did come to uh, take uh, Silicomai and the Republic um, showed up. He was taken off the planet uh, by Hetha. Uh, Hetha had kind of... He had vague memories in his childhood about her that she would show up, talk to his mother. Uh, his mother always seemed to be very reserved when she showed up. Um, but that's all the vague memories he had. Uh, he was a youngling, so he was probably about five or six at the time when he left. Uh, he was taken to Denon, uh, which is the sister pl city planet of Coruscant and was placed in the care of a Keldor named uh, Salu Azir, um, or Azer. And she kind of fostered him, but didn't, wasn't very motherly. She was more, of, you know, just kind of taking, taking him in as a ward. Um, and she started to see uh, that he had some really good instincts and... Uh, 
so she kind of fed him from the sense of Keldors have a big sense of justice and righting wrongs, kind of tried to instill that discipline in him. Um, and when he became an adult, um, he joined the Denon Cer uh, Security Forces as a police officer. And shortly after he he had barely been in there a few months, the uh, in, the Imperials came in, started taking over. Denon, uh, the ISB took over, and those that didn't join, he they were kind of cast off to the slums and you know disregarded. And so he eventually his precinct uh, dissolved down to where he was the last organic that stuck around and was stuck with a droid police force, uh, and was able to try to niche out just to keep in the peace, you know, keep crime down to as best he could. He began to rally uh, some of the people in the community um, around, you know, because he was looking to do the, this. Um, and this is when Hetha returned back into his life um, and started kind of being that ghostly aunt that dropped a little trinkets here and there to help his cause. Um, but the stress started getting to him, and he started getting nightmares and dreams of things he couldn't explain. Um, and that is when Hetha told him uh, not only did was he one with the Force, uh, he's a, he'd actually been using some of the Jedi tricks, um, and informed him that his mother was actually a Jedi that had been uh, cast out of the Order when she became pregnant with him. And so he's had that sense that his, you know, he knew his mother was still out there. Uh, she actually was under a different, she was using a pseudo name at the time. Um, and so he's been recently conflicted of trying to go find his mother. Uh, and now that he's got the revelation of the force, you know, he's starting to see the correlation of when certain things happened. Uh, that maybe there's some truth to it. So he's a little skeptical, but he's not one to turn away to find out the truth. Um, and that's where I've got a, got him loosely based. He's in that he's been in that state of do I stay or should I go? You know. Yeah. Um, he does have a force ability. He has seek uh, as one of his force powers. Um, and also, he has uh, the ability to sidestep. So, nice, that's a nice little talent. Mm -hmm. um, you want to tell us a little bit about the justice hatred uh, morality? Mm. Um, the justice part is that I mean, he's more into the legal aspect of justice, but also in the righting wrongs. If somebody's been wrong, that you know, you compensate it in some way. He's not. Judge, jury, and executioner style. Um, he was kind of forced to play a little Judge Dredd in his um, time okay. in the law enforcement. Okay. Uh, but he turned around more like community service. I mean, he tried to find something that was reasonable. If you did damage, either fix it, pay for it, or do something to help somebody else. Uh, the hatred comes from seeing the ISB come in and how they, you know, they didn't want you know the lesser people with they they didn't matter um but also he his hatred is more for people who have no sense of morals uh that will you know basically cold-blooded killers that's you know anybody that just you know uh, is, has no conscience about it that's where his is, is just basically killers and and not so much the oppressors so okay now, uh, Becca and Lexi have played a couple of times, uh, but they're not the seasoned veterans that the other three of you are, so you you may not have characters that are quite as filled out from them. <laughs> That's fine. But, but uh, Becca, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what you want to about your character. Okay. I can well, I just, I just <laughs> follow that and see how you do. <laughs> I think it's like you guys, you guys all have like these nice long life stories, like, and I'm just sitting here like, uh, I know she's a Twi'lek. <laughs> hey, that's some of the best characters. You can build it as you go. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll go first. Okay. Um, I'll... Don't hear me. Oh. Yeah, I can. You're kind of like. Fading in and out, but I can understand I what you're saying. Um, 
Okay, so my character, um, his name is Bruda, and he is, I didn't think about his age at all, uh, but I'm thinking like, and he is a Zabrak, or Zabrak, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Zabrak, yeah, you're going in and out, Lexi. Yeah. Becca, go ahead. Okay, um, well, my person is a Twi'lek named Syria. Syra? I can't remember how I wanted her name to be pronounced. <laughs> anyway, she's a 20-year-old, and... I don't remember how you pronounce the Twi'lek homeworld. Ryloth. Ryloth, thank you. <laughs> She's from there. Uh, she grew up mostly um, like on the streets by herself because she like ran away from the orphanage that she was in because it just sucked. And, you know, she lived on the street. She knew how to like fight and take care of herself from a young age because she kind of had to learn and one day when she was 12 she met a jedi and he told her that she was strong with the force and she was like uh i don't know what you're talking about and then when she turned 17 when order 66 happened another jedi came and was like i need to teach you what to do because you know all the other Jedis are dead. Jedi, sorry. Jedi, plur, whatever. Um, anyway, but eventually that Jedi that wanted to train her was killed by a stormtrooper because uh, they just got caught in the crossfire. They didn't actually know he was a Jedi. And now she's... Um, that's like now her ambition is to like train herself to become that but it's kind of rough for her because you know she doesn't have anyone to guide her through that so yeah that's about it okay and you've selected I'll pull it up here you have selected uh, for your morality uh, enthusiasm and recklessness yeah. <laughs> so how does that work? How do you think that works for her? Well, in my in her little like notable features thing it says she has like multiple scars and bruises from having to fight and live on the street, so she's pretty loose about just running into something because she wants to like not gonna she's not one to sneak around guard she's one to run up and shoot him which she's not much for sneaking around like han yeah. solo she doesn't like all this sneaking around no nah, she's very straightforward <laughs> with everything okay all right uh lexi are you able to talk all right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give her my headset, my USB headset. I'm going to switch on my webcam mic, and we're going to see if that works. So hang on a second. First, I'm going to try to switch over to my webcam mic. I can hear you. No, I can't hear you at all now.
pick her up. You might be able to pick her up over my mic. Yeah. Here, why don't you put this on and talk? I'll give you a place to set up. Why did you sit here? Okay, that's fine. Okay. You go ahead and mute yours, you'll be able to hear it on mine. They should be able to hear you on that. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Can everybody hear me right now while I'm talking? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, she's having a great time. Yeah. What? She loves your stories. She loves stories. Rachel, she's listening. You good? Oh, okay. Okay, All right, yeah, just so go ahead and talk about your character. Okay, so uh, my character is a Zagrak uh, named Bruda, and uh, it's probably around, like, late 20s, um, and I haven't thought him through very much, but I guess basically he wants to overthrow the Empire, and um, he has a lot of anger issues, and that's his, like, opposite. He, he's um, also, what is it, courage, courageous? Let's see. Or bravery, yeah, bravery. That's what I meant. Uh, bravery and anger, and so. Um, but his motivation behind that is, um, when he was younger, his younger brother was kidnapped by the Empire, and um, he thinks he's still out there. He feels that he's still out there. Um, but he, he has no like, evidence or proof, and so he could be long gone. He could still be somewhere. Um, but he all he knows is he wants to overthrow the Empire and destroy them. Um, he, let's see. What are my, I have abilities, right? Right, those will be on the combat screen. That's what doesn't make sense, but that's where they're at. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, I have Seek and Misdirect, so. Okay. I don't know what else to do. All right, so what I'm going to do is set this mic in between Lexi and me. Can everybody hear me right now? I can hear you, but you're kind of quiet. How's this now? Is that better? That's good. I can hear both of you okay. Can you hear both of us okay now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ideal thing would be really for, for, um, okay, well, once we get done with this, I'll order a headset. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll get, we'll be ready next time. We yeah. thought we were ready this time, but we weren't. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the five of you and your friend Glandola the Hut, who hasn't joined you yet, have all been summoned by your uh, co this your common mentor that some of you have talked about that you've met at some point in the course of your lives to the planet Ariadu. This is a planet that's on the outer rim. That means it's away from Coruscant and kind of the hub of the universe. And uh, the planet Ariadu uh, is known for several things, but among them is a uh, university, a very large university that... Um, is known for uh, research into ancient things, let's say. And the university also includes a very large collection of artifacts, of different kinds of artifacts. So a few days ago, uh, you received this, um, this uh, call from 
from uh, Hetha uh, saying, I'd like you all to come and meet me and meet a friend of mine named Asher on Ariadu because he's going to talk to you about uh, uh, something he's discovered that's very, very interesting. And they've given you a, he's given, she's given you a specific place where you're supposed to go meet with her and with Asher, which is just a little cafe that's located on the campus of the university there. So you have all made your way there, and uh, maybe two or three of you know each other, and you're gathered together at this cafe now, uh, waiting on them to arrive. And so you've all got a chance to kind of interact with each other for a second before Hetha arrives. So we find the corner booth, have our backs to the wall, have eyes to the <laughs> entrances, looking left and right. <laughs> Situational awareness. So have all of us met each other at some point? Not necessarily. Uh, okay. You might recognize, if you've known her for a long time, you might have seen some of the others before. But you know there's supposed to be five other people. A total of six people. Yeah, quiet. And... I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so there's a lot of awkward silence, and uh, then following the awkward silence, uh, Hetha comes in, uh, and along with her is a gentleman uh, in a blue robe that's uh, carrying a couple of data pads with him. Uh, he has got longer black hair. And she says, hi, friends. I'm glad you're here. I want you to introduce you to my friend Asher Sungazer, who is a scholar at the archives here at the university. And he's got something that he wants to show you. By all means. Cool. So he pulls out uh, his data pad, and he shows you this picture. He says... Um, I found this at the archive at the university here. And uh, what you see is a picture of a kind of a stone talisman, but it looks like it's got these veins, these veins of color that kind of run down through the talisman. And he says, the crystallization in this stone is really interesting to me uh, because Hetha and I both agree that it reminds us a lot about the stories about lightsaber crystals that we've heard. And uh, the engravings, they could be like several thousand years old, so we're really, really interested in it. Uh, and I don't want to say more about it here, because uh, the Empire sometimes is listening, and they tend to censor our communications. But um, if you can get into the university and meet me there, then I can show you a whole lot more once you're inside. But uh, she says one thing to watch out for, uh, it, it, they both say one thing to watch out for is that uh, you're not going to be able to get inside the university unless you can show them some academic credentials. She says she knows that none of you have academic credentials that you would be able to show, at least not that she's aware, but uh, uh, she suspects that a group as resourceful as you will be able to come up with some kind of a solution to the problem of getting in. And he gives you a description of where his office is once you get in there and, uh, and uh, for how you can find it. And then they ask, and then Hetha says, I'm going, now I have to go. I've run into another really urgent matter that I may eventually need your help on, and I'll send for help from you when I need it. But in the meantime, if you need to get off the planet, I've got a ship that I've left bef behind for you in the spaceport. It's a G9 rigger. Uh, you can actually see it on your, uh, on your uh, journal screen right now uh, that you'll have access to uh, if you need to leave the planet at some point or another. Uh, just go, there's a spaceport that's near the university and you'll be able to go and use that, uh, that ship if you need to. Um, so then Hetha kind of rushes off. She seems a little bit concerned about whatever it is that she's doing, but she rushes off. And that leaves you there with Asher. 
who says, do you have any other questions? I don't really want to talk about this in a lot more detail, but do you have any other questions before I leave? Well, if we don't have the credentials to come out outright, we're going to have to go through the quote-unquote enrollment and application process, I'm assuming. That'll be fun. We I'll just go and, like, pick out our major and all those things. <laughs> So yeah, that could take us weeks. Pretty, uh, I already missed my talent. <laughs> the I know a guy talent, yeah. <laughs> nope, you're going to have to figure out some way to show some academic credentials or to otherwise get into the building is what it amounts to. Once you're in the building, he says, I sh you shouldn't have any trouble finding me in... Wow. in Normally I, I, I would forge them, but I don't have any abilities <laughs> to do that now. <laughs> Starting uh, characters. We can just find they? a student and take their credentials. <laughs> Becca's already getting know. into her character pretty sure. well. Yeah, man. Let's go. Man, I should have put some points in to get, uh, uh, <laughs> like. <laughs> Should have put some points in a skull duggery. I could have pickpocketed one, probably. Uh, the one thing about it is, I mean, you know, there is the actual security detail. I mean, walking up to the front desk and saying, "Where do I gotta go?" I mean, if a university holds true, you got people that are gonna be going in between classes. They're not gonna keep their eye on their thing. If you move as a small groups, you know, you're just a couple students passing between two buildings. Then back door. There's no stealing of credentials. There's no, you know, yeah. Because I just don't see. I don't see a bunch of bucket heads running around here, you know, asking for identification. You know, so yeah. I could be wrong, but you know, well, Dosh can't gonna... tell these days. Yeah. Is there any way we could just like get fake passes and be like, oh yeah, we're just touring the university? That is an option. You'd be the one to do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, it's possible. It's an option. You know, if, split, 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 you know, kind of divide if, and conquer a little bit, but you know. If anything, we can just bribe anyone who catches us. Crap! I don't have the skills for that either. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I don't think I have any credits right now. Oh man, this is going to take some adjusting. <laughs> 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 So what you're saying is we're in a college can't town and we can't even get a fake ID to drink on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we could just find some college kids and bribe them with beer. That's a perfect plan. Let's go for it. I got four green and deception. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, the, the real question is if all we're trying to do is get into the university, why do we have to put the deception up that we're, that we're trying to be students? I mean, is yep. there a security pass or something that's... You're, you're actually trying to be researchers. Okay. The academic oh, credentials, yeah. you're trying to show you, pass yourselves off as researchers. Okay. Well, I might have a, I might have a pass that I could do pretty well. And looking around, it's like, hmm, too young... Maybe. Hey, if I grab those uh, books uh, that I was given uh, about the uh, warlords and whatnot, at least I'd look like a student. Kind of. Yeah, just grab a bunch of books, walk around like you know what you're doing. It'll work out. That's about all college is. Yeah. Hmm. If we're trying to get legit. Right, let's see. Uh, Maybe we're overthinking it. I mean, like, how, how high, high is the security? Like, will we be able to figure out a way around it and just not even bother with it? Well, this is, I mean, these archives are going to be, they're going to have a lot of valuable, like, relics. And so there's going to be some security that mm -hmm. is going to be in place to kind of protect it. Okay. Well, maybe we could... Uh go to the admin building and uh, we'll crap our way in and say uh, we need some visitor passes. Did no one pick up the force persuasion? <laughs> <laughs> Why would we do that? It's not useful. You know? <laughs> hmm. I might be able to 
do like a Jedi mind trick on somebody to give to have them give us passes. Let's see. You have. I have one. On force rating. I don't know if that's enough. You uh, you do have influence. You do have the influence power. Oh yeah, man! Uh, I made this so long ago. I can't remember any of my stuff right now. <laughs> yeah, you do have the influence power. That would allow you, if you were successful, um, that really uh, all you could do with that basic power, which is all you have, is uh, generate an emotional state. You can make somebody feel stressed or happy or relaxed. That So that could be part of a plan, but you don't have enough of the influence to actually do the Jedi mind trick yet. Okay. So if, if you do that, um, we can go to the admin building and I can tell them that we're a group of scholars here for research. Uh, we don't have our passes somewhere in the mix. Uh, communication got screwed up, so they don't have our information. And could you, you know, give us a hand? And you could you could give them the sob story about you're doing your thesis work for your major or your uh, master's or PhD, and let's see what we can do. Yeah, I think and that I, I think that would work. And I can throw you two assists, and actually, Dustin could too. Them to grew to pack skills. Yep. That sounds good to me. So maybe if me and Dustin rapid fire about, you know, hey, we're supposed to be here, and I don't know what happened, don't know why you guys don't have the info, whatever, whatever, and then you give them the puppy dog eyes and say, I've got to do this for my research. Yeah, maybe we can get in. <laughs> I think that would work. Is is everybody else okay with that plan? I'm game for it. It's going to be interesting to see how we can pull this off of the numbers, but I'm game. <laughs> and what's going to be the worst that happens? I yeah. I couldn't understand what you just said, Lex. Oh, I said it can't be too hard yet, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we just started this. Can't be that bad. All right. We just all get shot by stormtroopers. That's all. So, so as you go ahead. So, do any of us actually look the part? I mean, I'm 20, so I could probably pull that off, right? Okay. If Andrew were here, I think it would definitely be suspicious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a Targuda. We've got a human, a Twi'lek. Two Targudas. Zendrick and... A Zabrak. Two Targudas. Two Targudas. Kind of oh, goody. Um, so that could be... So what's your special? So what? What's your career path that you were looking at? I mean, this is in characters like you know, what deal, and you're just looking for other, you know, resources in the library, and this would be your protege. Student academic uh, is my key ability. You're researching perhaps uh, old tactics and strategies. I actually have the books for those. Okay, well that'd be a commonplace deal. And you're just looking for other, you know, resources in the library, and this would be your protege. Student academic? I don't know. I mean, but you two covered. That's easy. Mm -hmm. I might be able to swing something. And if I recall correctly, Bruda rolls a pretty mean coercion roll. Uh, Has a pretty mean one. Oh, yeah. As, as a last ditch, yeah. you know. 
backup um, plan. You might think about that. All right, Shada, you can uh, you can go in and give them the story and and uh, uh, let's see. Well, let me you can back you can back Sarah, and then if it comes down to intimidating our way in, I can just act angry and pissed off and back Bruda with with his role. Okay. And Michael, I guess you could be the calm voice of reason in this. Possibly. I, I was looking at if we need to go to the secondary thing, I'm I'm I can pursue it from I might be able to swing a quote unquote request, you know, but well, you know, you do have a badge, correct? <laughs> That's what I was kind of going with, is that I can take these two, point to uh, Sarah and uh, Bruda. I'm training them, and I'm trying to, you know, we've got some, you know, we're just all kind of educating ourselves, trying to get ourselves educated because we've seen a lot of contraband and, you know, uh, antiquities, quote unquote, and we're just trying to see what, get more knowledge as to what's out there. You know, it's the best resource to do, and I can do it as a formal request for short term training. All right, well, let's make a decision. What route are we going here? We're going to go to the training or the undergrad students with professors or what? Or are we going to try to sneak in separately? I think it would be too hard to sneak pupils. in separately. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we if one group fails, we still get one group in to get the info. So it's a possibility. That's hmm. Yeah, I suppose really we only need one in there anyway, do uh, don't we? As far as I know, yeah. Well, could we just like have like a whole distraction while one person can just sneak in there? It's a possibility too. Mm -hmm. Kind of pointing to Bruda and, and Syrah, it's, I mean, they can s slip in and be pretty much unobtrusive and blend into the background. I don't know about it, the rest of us. <laughs> no, so probably not up, too easily. You know, if I put it up in front and they slip past, there we go. Because we're not technically, I mean, we're just trying to get in somewhat legitimately. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. I mean, are, are we just trying to get on campus unnoticed or do we actually need like a, pa a pass like a you, you're, more, you're more or less on campus right now the way he explained it to you is that to get into the archives which is where Asher's office is you're going to have to have credentials and you're going to have to get past security um, I'm thinking just once we get in there just pickpocket someone's ID to get in. Yeah, it's think, sitting around waiting and it draws a lot of attention. I mean, we'd have to have a mark to work with. Yeah. It's basically going to be a fast talk job. That's what we're going to have to come down to. Right. Yeah, I think... I think we should try smooth talking the security or sweet talking, whatever you call it. What would IG do in this situation, Brad? Oh, we've already blasted a hole in the door by then. <laughs> <laughs> Half the campus would probably be dead. <laughs> or fleeing for their lives. And no one even drew a gun yet. They just refused to set the front door and you just shot through. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, having starting characters sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, All right. 
I say we go to the archives and just try to waltz in. When we get stopped, we'll try to BS our way on through. Okay, who's got the best deception or highest cunning? Uh, yeah. I've got four. I've got threes. Again? Yeah, so it seems like you're the... No, okay, I want to come up with a story that, yeah, um, I don't know. What did we go with? Uh, and whatever it is, I can pro I can make the <laughs> deception check. Brad can assist me because we got that Tegruta thing going on. Um, I have books. Um, yeah, we'll just say we'll just say, hey, we schedule this. Why don't you have our credentials here? What's going on? And then I'm just going to act really upset in case we don't get it. Right. Hey, look who's yeah, here. I'm just, going, I'm just going to pull a casket right here and pray for the best. <laughs> with uh, pretty much some of the things we've come up with, I guess. Andrew, how's it going? Uh-oh. Hmm. Andrew, we're not picking up audio or anything. Oh, shoot. I forgot you like to play on, on Hangouts. Uh, uh, what browser are you on? I don't think you can hear me either. Yeah, this is really exciting stuff here <laughs> while we try to get Andrew into the game. Oh, I got like, this is the most awesome Twitch stream ever. <laughs> right? Lots of silence and typing. Well, we got four right now, but that includes me and uh, and Michael. I don't know who else besides that. I know, right? And I think Levi's watching, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, he says he can hear someone very quiet, but apparently no one can hear him, which is right. Okay, uh, let's... Session one. Technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> I need something like that. Okay. Um, all right, in your settings. <laughs> I have to admit, if we have a HUD in here, I, I'm throwing that plan out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think a HUD would be suspicious at all. No, if we have a HUD, we're to say, uh, we're here on business, let us in. <laughs> yeah, then we'll have to go oh, hey, we got Maxwell here. Oh, Max. Oh, nice. That's good. Everybody else is going, who? What? Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what's going to do the Twitch stream if we. If, if I create a, a new. Well, let's just see what happens. I'm going to create a Hangouts, and uh, do you know how to get into Hangouts, Michael? I've not used it, actually. But I'll, Well, what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll give you a, a, uh, a link that you just click on, and then it'll take you to a new copy of the game. Yep. 
All right, here Hang we on. go. Andrew said he's uh, logging back in. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. Somebody's playing around with a distance tool, which is fine. I just think it's interesting. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> and somebody else, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just clicked the little ruler, and I couldn't get it to turn off. So I'm <laughs> Yeah, you just click I'm on that. pointing at people. Yeah, you just click on that arrow up at the top, and it'll switch, back, switch you back over. Uh, okay. All right, he's back. Can you hear anybody now? No. All right. We want to try Hangouts. That's fun. All right. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Hey, we never rolled for Destiny, did we? No, we didn't. Oh. We need to do that in a minute. I'm glad I didn't get too far without that. My Destiny is still messed up. <laughs> I know, my destiny is real messed up. Um. <laughs> And my Hangouts isn't loading. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wait, it lets you, like, doodle on the screen? Mm -hmm. How do you get yeah. rid of it? <laughs> um, Matt can delete all the uh, drawings at once. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the link, switch over to... We'll, and we'll just switch over to that Hangout. Hopefully that'll work for Andrew. How do you switch over? Uh, just go to the link in the chat. Oh. And then just exit out of the other. Hello. Hmm. Yeah, you can exit out of the other one when you're done. We got everybody but Andrew and Hangouts now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Becca, well, she's got, she's on mute. Yeah. No, you're not on mute. It looks like you are, but you're not. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm muted. I'm muted in Hangouts, but I didn't mute it in the yeah, other. Okay. All right. Funny. But I'm still hearing myself. All right.
All right. Well, we'll we'll just stay in Hangouts. Maybe Andrew will figure out how to find us here in a second. Get in it. He may just be having technical issues. Because I can see him, I can still see him. If you can hear me, Andrew, I can still see you on the roll twenty screen. Um, but uh, but not on the uh, on the Hangouts. You're not in Hangouts right now. All right, so that's some awesome art. That's really nice. Who wants to take responsibility for that? <laughs> Just cost it. Okay. What? Easy to blame him. He's not here. It's always his fault. <clears throat> so as you are leaving the cafe and you're walking across campus, um, you, there's, you see there's a few security guards, like campus security guards that are here and there. And you just happen to notice that uh, two of those guards grab this really tall, scrawny-looking scholar and pull him over behind a building where he's out of sight. And he's kind of struggling, but uh, one of the guards like punches him in the gut where he kind of bends over and they're kind of dragging him away. I need to help him. Right? Yeah. Yeah, let's do go. Do we have a choice in that? <laughs> yes, yes, you do. You do have a choice. The oh, cost I didn't know about it, I guess. You see that morality rating that you have that's 50? <laughs> you want it to stay there or higher? Maybe you don't have a choice, but yeah, you do have a choice. All right, all right. All right, all so I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reach into my robes oh, and whoa. Sure. That's my bad. That's me. Uh. I'm clicking things I shouldn't click. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here I'll. And I'm going to ready I'm... my light blaster pistol and flip it to stun. Okay. And start nonchalantly walking that way. Right, anybody else going? I'll go. Yeah. Okay. I'll go, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, it ain't going to be on stun, I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. And <laughs> so you, you see behind the building, off in the shadows, the guards shove him down onto the ground. The scholar shouts back, I wasn't the one who sent your brother to prison. He sent himself there. He shouldn't have been selling contraband. And there's a couple of scholars that kind of notice what's going on there, but they just sort of look the other way and keep going. They kind of avert their gaze and just try to keep going. Almost as if they see this occasionally. Okay, so... I'm going to pull my blaster and take aim, and then I'm going to say, hey, what are you guys doing? He's subtle. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting something intimidating, like, hey, you. One of them looks up and says, get away. This isn't, what's going on here isn't any of your concern. Well, you heard him. Yep. Oh, All right, let's go back to Oh, do we need to roll destiny? You know, that's a good point. You probably might need a destiny point here in a second. We haven't done that yet. So, yeah, not um, that one. so uh, what you're going to do, uh, Lexi and Becca, on your character sheet is you will see a place where uh, at if you it, it's at the top of every screen. <laughs> There's something that says roll destiny. Okay. There's a button that says just click, click it one time. Brad, Brad, did you just do a force die without God. using the uh, Destiny one? Because I don't think it added yours. Oh, so I can't. Uh, possibly. Sure. Hang on. Um, yes. There we go. Oh, man. I got a black dot. <laughs> I've still got one dark. Wow. 
and we've got nothing but dark. <laughs> we are so kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> The crack team of commandos here, I tell you. <laughs> if I had Brawl, I would have punched them, but I'll have one green. So Anybody like, having oh, trouble opening their, their character sheet in Hangouts? No. What? Anyone having trouble opening their character sheet in Hangouts? No. 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 Apparently not. Oh, well, that's good. All right, I'm going to roll one for you right now. Okay. We'll figure out what to do. I'm going to go ahead and roll one right now. <laughs> so there's hers. Wow. We have six dark side points in the destiny pool. Oh, man. <laughs> and so on that note... <laughs> it's broken. Hey, Matt, that didn't add the sixth one in there. I, I did manually. Let me force the update. Okay. There we go. They're having trouble hearing you, Lexi. You may need to speak up some more. Lexi and I are sharing a mic. All right, so he is um, he's uh, waiting for you to leave. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and stun him. So, <laughs> oh, okay. I don't think this is going to work out very well, but here we go. Uh, do we need uh, initiative? We're cool, right? Okay, yeah, we're all gonna roll. We're all gonna roll cool. And I'm gonna have to roll, I think, for Lexi here. So what you're gonna do, uh, Becca, is you're gonna open up your character sheet, and then you're gonna click okay. on. You're gonna click on combat. Combat. Where is that? The, you know how you have the different tabs, character info, skills, combat? Oh, hold on, I think I figured it out. Or I think I finally got it to work. Yes. Okay, um, and then there's a box that says show initiative. Okay, I see it. Click on that. Wait. Just, uh, just click a ch check that box that says show initiative. Why am I not seeing it? Did you roll it? No, what do I roll? You roll cool. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why I'm showing the... Oh wait, it was thing. already checked. I see. That's yeah. why I was so confused. And now you're going to make the cool die roll. Okay. Nice! I, I had a... I had a... Uh, I had a a GM, I had a, a, a force die in the dice pool, uh, so that's why. Okay. Okay, now we're going to roll for the security guards. Can anybody hear me? Yes, hey, yes. we can, can hear, hear you. you. Oh Listen. my god, thank goodness. <laughs> All right. So what's what's uh, happening is we'll they'll fill you in on everything else in a minute. But right now, your fellow party members are are uh, attacking a couple of campus security guards because they were picking on a scholar. Of course they are. <laughs> uh, you get to roll initiative. Good, good. So, uh, so when you're rolling your for your initiative, you don't roll the cool skill. You roll the the. Uh, th there's a special space for initiative up at the top of the combat screen. That's why a couple of you aren't in there. I'll go ahead and put you in, but that's why you're not in there. Okay. And we got a three and a one. Yeah, the other one's oh, a three and a one. I don't seem to be able to find the initiative on this version of the character sheet. It, yeah, uh, it's new. Um. If you look, if you look at the, uh, uh, there, you're, there's going to be a, there's multiple tabs. 
There we go. That are that say character what? info, skill, combat, item inventory, etc. There we go. Right. That's go. So you're going to click on combat, <clears throat> and then you're going to oh, and then you're going to check the show initiative box. Oh, there it is. All right. Yeah, and then so you're going to roll do... cool. All right. So we got one, two, three, four, five. We have all we have five, six PCs today. You know, I, I got my initiative button to actually work now. So there, that's that one O is the, my second roll. So you might want to take that one out. Okay. So now I'll get the NPCs. Did you want me to write a uh, roll initiative or uh, destiny as well? Yeah, go ahead and they need it, so please hey, do. Please do. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you, there's actually a place to roll for destiny on the character sheet as well. Oh, there we go. Roll destiny. Hey! Yes, Yay! God. I'm helping. <laughs> More so than the rest of the party combined. All right. I just lost better that connection. Yay! So they're going to roll Vigilance. Brad, what have you done? Uh, nothing yet. Except for maybe get the crap kicked out of all of us. And I'm going to get everybody onto the screen here. Yeah, so out of nowhere, this uh, hut suddenly comes uh, rolling in from behind you. <laughs> All right. So now we've got the first PC slot, which I assume is going to be Brad firing uh, a, a stun shot at one of the guards uh, using questionable this, discretion. Does anybody else hear Matt like he just went through a bad helium accident? <laughs> um, a little bit, yeah. 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 It's like weirdly echoed. It, who, I am? Yeah. Like you hear it normal the first time and then you hear it like slightly higher pitched the second time. I think this GM has a bad motivator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how's this? Is this better? This is awful. All right, so it's still doing it, right? Yeah. How's this? No? Nah. No. It's not terribly bad. All right. We're just going to have to go with a bad motivator. There you go. That's better. Okay. Um, this will be an average um, average light, an average combat check. All right. Uh, before I go through with this, um, oh, I'm just going to do it anyway. That's the spirit. I was, I was going to ask uh, how this would go with our morale. Uh, with your morality? Uh, yeah, morality is just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, for you, nobody else has done anything yet, so I'm, so I'm just going to answer this for you. Um... And for you, it is going to. <laughs> I you don't, you don't have your morality on the there for a second right now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You, you don't have it on the character sheet right now, so you're going to have to remind me of what it is. All right. Can anybody hear me? I can yes. hear you. I can yeah. hear you. 
Okay. Uh, we were at medium range, correct, Matt? Yeah. You want to know about how this would affect whether you take conflict for it or not? Yeah, I'm losing Matt now. I can't yeah, hear him. I can't, can't understand you. I hear him just fine. Oh. How's this? That's yeah, better. that's great. Okay. Yeah, you wanted to know about how it would affect whether you take conflict? Uh, actually, if we're at medium range, I can't stun him anyway because it's only short range, correct? Right. You could close All range right, first. All right, so I guess I will uh, take a move. Okay, you're like muting everyone. Yeah, it's because I keep hearing echoes. Because it's like I hear it on the first, like, roll 20 and then I hear it on Hangouts. Well, you can close the Roll20 screen. Wait. Just <laughs> leave, leave Hangouts open and close the Roll20 screen. Okay. I'll bet that'll fix it. Yeah, that fixed it. Okay. All right, so Dekash misses anyway. All right. Uh, but that's not a surprise since you're at medium range. So it just kind of bangs off onto the wall behind them. And they kind of jump. I don't think they expected you to actually shoot. <laughs> well, it, it, remember, it was a stun bolt, not a... Yeah. Well, that was your mistake right there. <laughs> now I'm going to say, I think you need to leave this guy alone. <laughs> I meant to do that. All right, we're going to stay in. Um, we're going to stay in combat right now with another PC slot. But I will remind you: you don't have to attack with your action in a combat round. So in any any PC can take a turn now. Come on, Mrs. Reck Mrs. Reckless, get in there. <laughs> And okay. you want to go? You choose to want to go. Just say I want to go. Okay, I'll go. Wait. I mean, what should I do? Subdue. I mean, should I shoot at them? You can shoot at them. You can try to talk them down, de-escalate the situation. Okay. Uh. Uh, you can try to intimidate them try, or coerce yeah, I guess them. I'll, like, kind of threaten them just to kind of be like, y'all better. Back off. Do what we say. Okay. So, so he's going to step up and kind of flex his muscles a little bit and uh, ask them to back off in a not-so-kindly way. And to do that, you're going to take one conflict point. So go down on your character screen. You're going to add one conflict. He's going to welcome them to see the gun show. <laughs> It's uh, down on the character info toward the bottom un under morality, conflict. Oh, yes, I guess right. Okay, add one conflict. Okay, now you are going to roll two purple dice. Okay. And then you're going to go to your skill, and you're going to add into that, and you're going to roll your skill of coercion okay. on the skills screen. So two, two yellow, two green? Uh, yes. That's what Oh, we are having a great night. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and he's not even having a flip dark side point. So that is a failure <laughs> and one advantage. Oh, okay. And so you get a little bit of a bonus if you want to pick for somebody. Uh, want to try to help somebody else out, for example, and whatever they do next. Okay. Um, well, I guess I can kind of just like. Maybe it comes as a surprise to them. They're not particularly like that afraid, but it comes as a surprise, so they're not as aware. I don't know. Okay, so you want to be you want things to be a little still disorienting to yeah. them, like yeah. what's happening? Are we being attacked? Are they trying to intimidate us? 
uh, why is there a hut over there in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's that's kind of how they're reacting to this right now. So that'll help. That'll uh, help their net. That'll set back. That'll add a setback die to their next actions. <clears throat> so we have another PC slot now because these guys rolled bad. Cool uh, vigilance checks. So who who wants to? Uh, Let me see if I can fail just like everybody else. So I'm going to move up um, roughly between these two. It's like, cool, cool, guys. Well, okay. And first off, how are these security guys, like, armed? Or are they just, like, with security batons? What? Yeah, they, they have these particular uh, guards have... Um, have uh, batons. They have security batons like you're describing, kind of stun mm -hmm. batons. They don't appear to have like like pistols and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and the scholar, is he more aged or... Yeah, he's, he's, he's an elderly, tall, thin, elderly guy. Okay. You know, just kind of come up within the plot distance go, okay, look, guys, well, you know, it's cool. We're all cool here. Just keep it cool. Uh, look, you got two guys right here taking on an old man. What the heck are we going to, you know, what do you expect us to be doing about it? I mean, come on, you got this guy overpowered. And so I'm going to basically try to distract them using just this, you know, come on, come on common sense, guys. Look at this. Come on. How bad, you know. Two young guys, old guy, come on, you can't do, you know, so. Okay. What the hell, we will try the, the lack thereof of the, uh, let's see, would that be more deception, I guess? Mm -hmm. um, you can go for deception or charm route, either way you want with it. Uh, let's go with deception, you know. Just throwing it off because that's the better chance. Oh, whoops. Average difficulty? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do, do, my health is fine. Put that in. So let's try that again. Okay. All right. So one of them looks down at the, the old man and says... All right, you get off the hook today, but uh, don't forget, we've got you. Uh, we're going to be watching you. And uh, they both kind of just turn around and walk away. And we're back out of combat. Now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> just kind of turn, <laughs> turn to the Tegruda, turn to the... <laughs> Sarah, look to my right and go, dude, work on it. You, quit being trigger happy. Okay, and go over to <laughs> <laughs> and And just kind of go and try to help dust off the scholar. Didn't... He says, oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad there are still some good citizens in the Empire. And a few and far between, but sometimes it just, you know, Manners, respect your elders, you know that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. but I, you know what? I don't really want to know the whole detail. But hey, if you got problems, I'm pretty sure. And I point back to the two there. So they'll they'll be glad to be your personal bodyguards at this point. You know, they're looking for a fight. So he says, but, "Why are Why are you all here at the university?" Uh, that guy, and I point back to, or excuse me, that lady right there, uh, Miss Shada, she's, or sorry, Professor, yeah, you, hey, this is, you, you can talk the scholarly at least stuff, you know, so, <clears throat> and I Wait. just kind of step back. <laughs> uh, would it be possible to ask this guy that we just saved to, like, <laughs> give us, like, a free pass to get inside of the building like the archives he says well i can't give you a free pass but i can give you a reference that maybe that'll be helpful to you in getting in 
Oh, uh, yeah. Can and we just, like, kidnap him and, like, make him say that yeah, <laughs> we're with him? Wow. Let's just go right to the next side. I'm done it. it quickly. I, I like where this is going. Right? <laughs> so that'll give, you, that'll give you some boost dice, blue dice that help you out when you're trying okay. to get in if you, if you refer to him. He says, my name is Cyril. I'll spell it for you here because it's a little weird spelling. It's not Cyril like in Archer. It's P S Y R E L. Oh, of course it is. Cyril, cool. And uh, and then he kind of saunters on his way, trying to gather himself together and head back into the crowds. Well, that's a start. Oh, man, this sounds like a really crappy university. <laughs> this could have gotten a lot better, but um, well, let's start. So, okay, so that was Plan B. So let's go back to Plan A and see what we got. Can somebody give me a quick recap now that we're out of that situation as to what I missed? Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the key spell cops negotiate. <laughs> sure, um, you, your uh, character uh, has been summoned. Your characters were all summoned to this planet area due by a common mentor that you all share, uh, and you've met with a at a cafe. They had met with the others had met with a a scholar by the name of Asher Sungazer who had found this artifact that had features that sort of reminded him of lightsaber crystals. And uh, he was interested in showing it to you to kind of get your opinions on it. But the problem is that to get into these archives where it's kept, you have to have academic credentials, which none of you have. Uh, and so uh, there's been a very carefully considered plan that's almost certainly to succeed. Uh, that your your other players have put together that involves trying to talk your way past the guards at the front gate. I'm not sure I understand the nature of the plan beyond that. Or yeah, alternatively sneak past them. Did you catch that? Yep. Okay. I think I got it. And, and ask any other questions you want. I'm sure they'll be glad to answer. So as usual, we're winging it. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, let's find an administrative office. All right. Okay. So you all head all head to the building that you can see depicted on uh, this the screen right now, uh, where the archive is kept. And uh, as you walk in, sure enough, you see two security guards that look very similar. They're not the same ones, but they're dressed very oh, similar. Good. They have the similar weapons. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That are, uh, are stationed at a desk there, and uh, you can walk up to them and interact with them if you want to. Let, let me handle this. <laughs> I'm just going to, to, uh, to, to ooze up to them. Okay. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I just, gentlemen, gentlemen, I, I would like to go in and, and partake of the archive, and, and may I say what sharp uniforms those are that you're wearing? Oh, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> they try to get on their good side. All right, so you can go ahead and do an average charm check. Uh, now you roll. You can roll a specific skill on this sheet. I know you hadn't played since we've done these sheets, but you can actually set the dice pool to average and then go to your skill. And yep, there you go. Oh my! Wow. wow. Well, there you go. See, they love me. Everybody loves Glendula. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they do. <laughs> well, they say well, we would really it love like to let disease. you in, sir, but we're we're only allowed to let people in with academic credentials. Um, can you tell us where you're from? Why you're here? Uh, do you have a 
uh, something to kind of show me what your academic experience is. I don't know how to do that. I do have a very high lore, but if I just start talking to these guys, they're not going to understand. So, well, that, well perhaps, perhaps if you could introduce me to uh, to somebody who has that access, and I I could show them my my credentials and and uh, and and how qualified I am. I'm afraid we don't have the same system in the hot expanse. Okay. Anybody else want to take a shot at anything? You're you're kind of on their good side. Someone mentioned um, Cyril. You could, yeah, you could just ask Cyril. We're here to we're here to work with him. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I didn't mention Cyril. I probably should have done that. You could pro you could just say it now. We're here for uh, Cyril. Okay. Somebody. Uh, uh, they say that's great, uh, but we just kind of have rules here. We can't let people through without academic credentials. Well, you sh okay. I'm going to tell you. You should have our credentials on record. We've scheduled this visit for months now. Yeah. And I'm just going to try to bluff them with that and see what happens. They say, oh, really? And they start tapping on their computer uh, I, trying to trying to find. We weren't informed about anything like that. Do you I, I'm going to pass on the advantage that I got to whoever makes the next roll. Yeah. Okay. So I'll you, make the roll. and uh, You want to make a deception roll with uh, two boost die. Average deception, two boost die. And okay. just to make it interesting, I'm going to spin a dark side point. <laughs> so upgrade the chat. You don't have any of those. <laughs> so the dark side point means that we're going to change one of those purple dice into a red dice. And the red dice means more bad things can happen, potentially. Hmm. All right. Brad knows how it works. <laughs> Yeah, not very well for us. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. There. That's the worst thing that happened. So they're just going, uh, well, I, uh, something's wrong here. Our systems must be down or something. It's been acting crazy on us lately. They kind of look over at Glandula, who they just love, and say, <laughs> uh, it's it's probably <laughs> something crazy. If y'all Can y'all just tell us what... Uh, uh, what you're here to study. Somebody tell us what you're here to study. We'll make a note in the system. Maybe we can get the manager to give us a temporary pass. Um, Ancient societies and leaders. Oh, that's, that's good. good. U.S. US presidents? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that's not a thing here. I'd like to go for kyber crystals for five hundred dollars. Um yeah, I'll just use my um books I have and uh knowledge and leadership because I'm sure studying warlords I also picked a little bit of culture and ancient history and that's sort of what this university does is ancient stuff, right? So Okay. And uh, I can't. Sorry, I can't assist you on that one. Okay, so we're yeah. gonna go. We get to keep the boost knife because you have your connections, uh, and uh, we'll go with an average um, deception check on that. Deception. Oh, uh, can he get a boost from my advantage there? Yeah. So two boost. All righty then. Nice, right? That's what good. do you know? All right, so that one of them walks away for a minute. They come back and they've got identification chips, and they said, "Okay, uh, here you go. Here's one for each of you. It's it'll, it should allow you to stay in here all day. You need to head upstairs uh, because you have to before you're allowed into the archives. You have to have a briefing with our uh, head of security. His name is Aaron Garai." Let's and, kidnap him. And they direct you to his office. <laughs> Let's kidnap them. At the end of I this, mean, we're just going to have some sort of Jedi kidnapping ring. It, it's not a bad <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right, so uh, off we go. All right. <clears throat> so you head upstairs, um, and you go into a room that's run by the uh, university proctor. His name's Aaron Garay, as I've, I've uh, shown you and, on the screen. And uh, you all sit around a briefing table, and he comes out. He's kind of a thin, wiry-looking man. I'll put him on the journal so that you can see him. Make it where he's visible in the journal for everybody. Hang on a second. Okay, he should be visible now where you can see him. He's kind of a thin, wiry-looking man. He's got a semi-official-looking suit. Uh, Seems pleasant, but very, um, his job is to be suspicious. It's not that he's suspicious necessarily of you in particular, but his job is to really check people out. Well, and uh, he says, luck, so he's, he says, welcome <laughs> to the university. Uh, before we let you delve into our research materials, we want to give you a quick orientation, uh, talk to you about a few rules. Uh, I know it sounds tedious, but we have a certain way we like to do things here, and so we want you to do things that way. Fair enough. Let's all stay really chill for right now. So, don't kidnap him yet. Yeah, not yet, happen. not yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we gotta make him feel comfortable before the kidnapping. <laughs> so, he talks to you about... Um, um, the archives, and he says uh, this is a major center for advanced learning in the sector, and the archive is crucial. So we try to maintain proper procedure in research. Uh, some of our artifacts are tens of thousands of years old, and that knowledge has to be protected and preserved and understood. Uh, so it's absolutely essential that you not take anything out of the archives, that you not attempt to remove it even from the room where it's at. Things can be brought to you. You can sit and examine them at a table, but then they have to immediately be returned. And you're not allowed to leave until you've been given clearance showing that, uh, that all the items that you borrow have been returned. Uh, he, he gives you a lot of other information, but it's not necessarily pertinent to anything. So I won't, uh, you know, so I'm not gonna go into it, but this is a pretty long briefing. So is there anything you all want to be doing or saying during the briefing? Wow, all these rules are super interesting. I'll just ask him some basic rules about what he's talking about so it seems like we're interested and we're paying attention. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to be looking about the room to see if anything just kind of seems off or, you know, Oh, you know, here's the Imperial Citizen of the Year Award, you know, type deal. <laughs> All right, yeah, make a perception check. Uh, we'll make it an average perception check. Okay. Do, do, do. So, so this guy just has the feel of somebody that uh, is pretty much straight on with the establishment. Uh America. And and very much probably going to be an ally of the empire uh, if if he's asked to choose sides. He's a narc scanner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be doing this impatient tapping with my fingers across the table while he's talking. <laughs> for it to end. Trying to bite my lip and not say anything. <laughs> And it, okay, uh, he's, and, he's, and I he's, am curious to how much he's eyeballing Andrew. <laughs> he, he's finished. He says, "Is there anything else?" No. No. Sorry, was... sorry, I, I drifted off just after this is the beginning of our briefing. Can you? Uh, just <laughs> 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 he's he's not amused by that. <laughs> so what everybody is going to do now is uh, 
there you can make either a charm or a deception check. Um, because he's sitting there trying to figure out who you are and what you're all about. And so you can make either a, everybody can make either a charm or a deception check. Um, you are going to make that against one red and two purple dice. So you're going to put one red die and two purple yeah. in your pool, and then you're going to roll either charm or deception. Who wants to go first? I'll do it. I'll be stupid. <sighs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, hey. we don't, we do, you don't have your red in there. It should have been. Well, let me try this again. Oh, he does not love Glandula. You don't have your red in there either. Yeah. Mm. That's weird because the red is there on the sheet. Make sure your marker's not still on it. Oh, okay. That was That's yeah. Was. You have to you have to remove focus. We'll check that one out. Everybody yeah. loves <laughs> I don't see any nice. purple. Everybody that loves Glandula. That's the... <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to add two strain on nice. your character sheet. <laughs> Sorry. For the two threat. <laughs> okay. Wow. Now let's let's skip back up to um, Sarah's because you rolled you rolled a triumph on yours. Yay! That Is means that something pretty awesome happens in I mean, addition to you being successful. So, and you get to make a suggestion about what that is. Oh wait, you didn't have two purple in. It's not going to match. You need to roll. Uh, well, let me let me do it for you. I think that'll make it a little easier. Just this one time. All right, so you actually aren't successful, but you still get that uh, that try. You still get to choose something with a triumph. Something really nice happens in the course of your trying to be charming with uh, Mr. Garai. So what 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 would you select for that? Get his digits. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe like he get like somebody walks in the room and is like, "Hey, we need you right away," and he has to leave and not ask us any more questions. Okay, that's a good choice. So what we'll do is we'll give um, we'll give everybody because he's a little bit distracted and that could make a difference later. We'll keep that in mind that he's going to be a little bit distracted for the next few minutes because he got interrupted. So. Uh, now we've got uh, Shata and Dekosh both have advantage that they can spend as well. All right. Uh... Andrew, he'll be back. <laughs> Struggling on right, the advantage. Since, there. What's that? Well, I failed, but the uh, advantage can I like throw him in the wrong direction? Like he doesn't trust me, but he gets the wrong read of what I'm all about. Yeah. Like he 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 might think you're you you're just a bunch of doofuses instead of that you have some nefarious plan in mind. Right. Maybe with three advantage, I find out he has a thing for female Togrudas. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would do that. Okay. But you take the advantages where you can. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you managed to make your way out of there. Do you want to go try to find Asher now? Can't. Yeah, let's let's not push our luck any further. Yeah, let's, let's just... our luck is terrible. Let's get the goods yeah. and go. Sarcastically, who are we going to be kidnapping now? <laughs> um. So this building is, uh, in contrast to kind of the campus and the rest of the city. Once you get inside the main part of it, it's very still. It's very silent. Uh, they even have noise suppressors that keep everything quiet so everybody can focus on the work that they're doing. 
Oh man. <laughs> Uh, the, Tired except of in the, people being kidnapped. <laughs> except in the work areas, the light's pretty pretty dim. Um, you you kind of get the scent of like you know old musty things. You get that scent. You're picking up on that scent. Um, you you ride an elevator up. There's like a hundred floors in this building. You ride an elevator up to the uh, area where Asher is, and he finds you and says, "Up! Oh, I'm so glad you found a way to get inside." I've been going out of my mind waiting on a chance to talk to you. Um, I just have a feeling about this talisman. I think it's really, really important. Okay. I hope so, because I think awesome. we really, really biffed our chances of ever coming back here. Yeah. yeah. I was so anxious to talk to you. Not anxious enough to send down a pass for you, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, not enough to actually help you in any way. <laughs> so you all go and you sit down in a room at a table, and uh, he he puts kind of an order in on his data pad. And a few minutes later, one of the employees there comes walking out with this box. And he opens up the box, and he sets it in front of you. And I have a picture of what you see inside the box that I'll show you here. I'm going to put it, in, it'll also show up in your journal. So can everybody see it now? Um, yes. Wait, where would it be? Uh, down towards the bottom. If you look on your journal down toward the bottom, the same place where you look at your character, you, you open your character sheet, it'll say relics. Oh, yes. Oh. So here, cool. here's what you see. Um, you see in addition to the uh, talisman, there is something that looks like an old transponder, which is something that gets attached to a ship so that you can identify what the ship is. Uh, looks like a, a something that's an old report that was made by a stormtrooper. There's some kind of a control core for a droid. Uh, there's a helmet that is like sliced in half. This is like an armored helmet that's just been sliced, bam, right down the middle. Uh, very, it would take really powerful force to do that. And then finally, you've got the talisman that you can see there. He says, so there's two things about this that are interesting to me. Uh, besides a, me just not knowing what it is, I'm not sure where it came from. Uh, we get dozens of cultural artifacts from across the galaxy every day. They get put in storage. They get cataloged. Um, it, this is like one of among thousands and thousands. And uh, sometimes the paperwork that comes with it, we just get it, and it's incomplete or it's missing. Um it looks like this is wreckage from a starship, maybe, but uh, who knows if it's even from the same site. So this is really fascinating. And uh, then he just invites you to kind of have a look at it. All right. Can we do a lore check on these? Harley, stop that. Sorry. Okay, so give me something specific that you want to do a lore check on. I want to check out the helmet. Yeah, that's what I wanted to look at, too. See if we can identify the culture. Okay, this would be a knowledge outer rim for anybody that wants to try it. It's an average check. Any, anyone or everyone can try it. Okay. But the, the skill is knowledge outer rim. Average. Tip. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that it's got four on there for some reason. So oh, you've got four. You've got four difficulty. If you want to re-roll, yeah, I don't know why it says two in my. I'm sorry. That's because I. It's I've got two in my dice pool. Go, oh, go ahead okay. and re-roll. I've taken it out now. Okay. It's like good lord. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> You're right. It's, yeah. Um. Wait. What do we? We just roll outer rim. Knowledge outer rim. You need to add two purple into that. Okay. Okay, so why will it not roll now? Uh, let me try 
as it can. Yeah, it's not rolling for me either. This is not our night, is it? No, no it's, it's not. not. <laughs> okay, let me let me restart the API. See if that helps. Um, Becca and I had a certain amount of incompetence. That no, y'all are fine. <laughs> all right, let's see here. No, these guys are all GMs. They deal with new players a lot, I suspect. Yeah, so yeah. they they know what it's like to be playing with people that are just starting out. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll educate you real good. So <laughs> yeah, this is a group who has been fairly incompetent ourselves. <laughs> incompetent. What it's are you that, talking? It's about? those six dark side points. I'm telling you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who is uh, going? Uh, let's try it again. See what happens. Okay, I'll try it. And... Nothing happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, here, let me just, uh, Give it a couple more minutes. We're still restarting the API. Okay. Maybe it'll we'll get it going here in a second. Okay. Um, while we're waiting, I want to look at the helmet and see if I can tell what causes damage to it. Uh, it looks like something just sliced clean through it. So, like a lightsaber. Yeah, can I make a, um, a lower check maybe with a bonus because I've seen something like that before? Yeah, and you can make it a simple one. Okay. Still <laughs> as soon as we get it back, I will make a check. Well, I can pass along one bow sty to Dasher. On identifying the helmet, could I get a boost in case if it relates to any of the leaders that I've studied as people? Or culture? Yes. So let's go back to uh, let's go back to uh, have, or have you rolled yet? Has Dekosh rolled yet? I'm looking at this. Yeah, he well, did. Dekosh yeah. rolled, okay. but uh, so you, you rolled, I said I wanted to pass along a boost to him because all I got was a boost. You can pass that to uh <coughs> Dustin, because you guys are kind of looking at the same thing, trying to figure out where this is from. I did, I was just checking out the damage. Yeah, yeah, you you're definitely recognizing the helmet as a, a, a kind of helmet that was used in the wars with the Mandalorians uh, that were waged thousands of years ago. Uh, that would be a. Uh... Shada, who is looking at that. I was just seeing if I could figure out what split the helmet in half. Yeah, and and the lore check tells you that it was split with a lightsaber. Okay. Must have been a Sam Squanch. So did you make your check, Dustin? So which side of the war would have worn this helmet? The Mandalorian. The Mandalorians. <laughs> sure, I've studied Mandalore and his successor, Mandalore. <laughs> <laughs> and you also recall a few things about the Mandalorian Wars as you're talking about it, that and you can see those on the screen now. Guys, Mandalorians were like totally cool. <laughs> <laughs> then why did they lose so badly? Well, you know, the economy. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still some other things there to look at if you want to. <laughs> we haven't even looked at the medallion thing, have we? No. <laughs> I'll look at that right what now. What that brought us here? Nah, let's look right. at the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome helmet! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
Who cares about the ancient the, the mysteries of the Force? Like, really Somebody guys? cut this thing in half. <laughs> I've got this cool medallion. Look at that helmet. So, so <laughs> like a bunch of elementary schoolers at a museum, museum that just want to like look at the <laughs> mummies and stuff, but don't <laughs> care about any of the other like super cool artifacts. It's split it's like in half. That's awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey guys, check out this machine. You can crush and flatten a penny. You know. <laughs> <laughs> He's just over there. Gosh, this medallion. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if somebody wants to do a hard, uh, you could do a knowledge lore check. Um, I, it's, this I could gonna, try. This one's going to be hard, so it's three purple die and then knowledge lore. I've got, I've got a few more. Um, I could try lore, yeah. So you've got to, Andrew, you got to get your three purple die in on that. There you go. Okay, again, it's doing that. I got How in the hell did I manage that? <laughs> that <was> impressive. <laughs> wow. I have a momentary, like, oh, yeah, that's, isn't that one of those things? You know? uh, oh. I know I dozed off again. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know that, uh, that you've heard stories about an ancient uh, Jedi master by the name of Val Issa. And um, this, this uh, Jedi, um, you know that this Jedi was associated with a charm that looked very much like this. But the, which is kind of unusual because most Jedi did not wear jewelry. And in addition... Is the um, Glandula's roll? Oh, Glandula didn't have the three purple on his roll, though. Yeah, my once I put the difficulty in, I <laughs> failed terribly. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So you know that this was apparently associated. Two or three of you recognize it. it this looks like Val Issa's. Uh, 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 amulet. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> okay. Um. So Valissa was a fabulous GM or a fabulous Jedi? A fabulous Jedi. It's a yeah. she, by the way. Oh, she. Uh. But, but she was fabulous. <laughs> Where was she from? You're not sure about that. Hmm. Where did I mean, she these come are from? like she you know, dozens. Some of you know, dozens and hundreds of stories. Uh, you know, yeah, legend type stories about Jedi over centuries and centuries. And this just happens to be one of the things that's well known in the stories. Is this is the Jedi that had the talisman? Okay. Can we ask to keep it? <laughs> You've already been told you can't take things away from the. Oh crap! We're gonna to have to kidnap I mean, someone, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna to have to kidnap all of the people in the entire campus. Hey, can we just like? I'm pretty sure that that turns into a hostage uh, situation yeah. at that point. Yeah, we're gonna need a bigger ship. <laughs> right. Um. So this amulet is thousands of years old. Hmm. So does uh, Glandula have some cheap trinkets we could just throw in there? <laughs> <laughs> How good's your deception? We can just fool them into thinking that my, my necklace is theirs. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone else hearing an echo or just me? Yeah, I'm hear hearing it. a little bit of one. I'm not. But, but it's it, not too bad. 
I was say, with as much technical difficulty we have, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, we're good. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So Asher's kind of looking at this saying, I really, I wonder where this, all of this came from. Uh, what, were, what were some of the other pieces here? Well, you've got the old transponder that looks like it came off of a ship. Um, you've got an officer's report from a stormtrooper from back this in was, that time. This was all in one um, box or crate type of thing, right? All, all in one box. I want to check the box in case there's a uh, a hidden compartment somewhere or a false bottom. You or don't anything you, extra. You don't notice anything of that nature. Oh, right. does anybody here good at astrogation? Uh, no. I can get us to like um, a fast food restaurant, but. <laughs> 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 I don't think you need an astrogation roll for that. I want to check out the uh, Stormtrooper report and see what it says. So this says, uh, it says... Can you even read? I can read. I just can't <laughs> really... Yep. It was a when, it comes to, when it comes to shooting, no. It looks like it's a report from a uh, lieutenant... It, uh, it says all useful cargo has been confiscated and added to our stores. The smuggler has been judged and sentenced. Uh, then, then suddenly, uh, this is like an audio report. You hear in the background, um, the uh, the sound of blaster fire in the background. And all of the cargo, a transponder, helmet, electronics, and some sort of necklace are going to be delivered to Area Do. Nothing else to report. Um, <laughs> and the the report notes that these artifacts were uh, acquired apparently by the smuggler about four years before that. So that smuggler is long dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that would be the sentenced part. Uh, no, the Empire doesn't kill their prisoners, surely. <laughs> they're well, not they're trying to shoot them. <laughs> as, as a side note, have any of you guys seen the old uh, video called Troopers? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what that reminded me of. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so... Let's check out the uh, transponder. See if we can find what ship it came from. Okay, we could do mechanics or knowledge core. Well, let's start with mechanics. Uh, average <laughs> mechanics check. <laughs> I can I'll, I'll try that, but <laughs> I'll assist. <laughs> okay. And that's oh, not oops. average. That's uh, you've got an extra uh, purple in there. Yeah. And take but, my two blue. Okay. Pack uh, can I also assist? So yeah. she'll have four. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, not needed. Well, aren't we just mm. irrelevant? So, we? <laughs> <laughs> so the sh the name of this ship is the Astral Jester. That's a cool name. the The name of the ship that this transponder was attached to is the Astral Jester. Pretty sure Shata does a face paw. Alright, um, since we know this was Mandalorian Wars, Jedi, I'm going to see if I know anything about that ship. Where it might have been active or anything like that. Okay, you can do a computer's check. Okay, and I'll take the two assist if you want to give it there, Shada. Sure. And what's the difficulty? Uh, the... Just it'll be a, a sim it'll be easy one purple dice. All right, this is more my speed. Let's try this. What? <laughs> no, it isn't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Is that better? <laughs> oh, that is better. 
I see it's a Groot, it's just Art Monk. So this is yeah, this is not. obviously a really ancient uh, ship. Um, but there was a captain of this ship that claimed to know secret hyperspace lanes that would go through the core, but he never returned from his travels. Um, but there are there are some records of where the uh, where the ship was last uh, logged to have tried to go, and here's a list of some of the systems. Oh, well, if we cross-reference that, we come up with Kohler. Because that's maybe where he ran into Mandalorians. Hmm. They're spelled slightly different. Yeah, there's an H in one of them. Yeah, that's it's supposed to be the same. I, that's my error. It's supposed to be the same system. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we have to find that ship, as the record of those hyperspace lanes would be highly profitable. I mean, very useful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and what's this last little thing here? Like a droid core or something? It's a droid uh, control core. Somebody want to check that out? Could you like a computer check and see like what, like what kind of droid it went to? Maybe yeah, yeah. something like, like that. that. So yeah, so someone you can try either at a knowledge core worlds or computers. It's, but in either case, it's going to be hard. Uh, so which is three board. three purple is hard. All right, I'll assist on that, so you'll have two blue. So we get, yeah, okay. two two blue dies for assists for whoever's rolling here. Okay, I'll roll, roll it. it. So, so three, three purple, purple and two blues? blues? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. That, oh, yeah, with, that, was, that was helpful. <laughs> um, so there are these, there's these war droids that, are rumored to have existed during this time that were called basilisk war droids. Oh, whoa. Like, like Harry Potter, Potter basilisk? basilisk? And supposedly, yeah, maybe a little. And uh, supposedly the Mandalorians would actually ride these four-legged machines, kind of like people ride tauntauns. <laughs> yeah, they, they would. They were semi-intelligent like droids. They were highly feared. I dig. Um, yeah, all, <laughs> you also good. seem to remember that there is a limited area of deployment for them during these wars. Although nobody can remember offhand exactly what what that area was. Hmm. 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 All right, so we have Mandalorians, Basilisk war droids, a Jedi, a ship, and a place, and some secret hyperspace routes. I say we find Kohler and see if we can find the ship. Yeah. Yeah, I agree probably been confiscated since well no wait a minute was the uh, the smuggler what ship was he on was he on this on the uh, oh what was the, name? The, the the report the report from the stormtrooper is more recent that like they caught it in the possession of I may not have explained this well in the possession of a smuggler and then it was turned into the archives oh yeah, I think I didn't explain that as well as I should have. That's that's just kind of an explanation of how it got into the archives. Maybe we should do some research on that Kohler system before we get there. 
if only we can find some source of information, like a library. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I know this Bothan, and he knows a guy. <laughs> As you're sitting there talking, you're all of a sudden, everyone's attention kind of shifts toward the talisman. And you're all just beginning to get this strange feeling like it's reaching out to you. Uh, like it wants you to somehow um, listen to it or hear a story from it. You don't know exactly what that means because you've never experienced anything like this before, but you're starting to get that feeling. Okay. Um, I can I, it like, up. pick it up? Uh, yeah, somebody can pick it up. Okay. She picks it up. I'm going to take a couple of steps backwards because I still don't believe in this mumbo jumbo. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm trying to become a Jedi, so I'm already like force sensitive, so it might give me a little bit of an extra advantage it, if I yeah, don't know what it, it's trying to do. And in this game, everyone is force sensitive, but some of them don't know it yet. A couple of us, a couple of the players, don't know it yet. Oh, okay. So, I thought it was like you get to choose. Yeah. Well, but you like believe, so you're like. Yeah. I do believe. Okay, so I want you, to believe. You can put it. You can put it on if you want to. Okay. And look fabulous. Right. Yes, <laughs> it is a very fabulous necklace. All right. So you you put it on, and suddenly you're standing on like this stone uh, stage, and you're looking at this safe that's embedded in the floor, and. There's a holocron that's sitting inside the safe, and the safe is uh, got a, a block over it about the size of an astromech dro uh, droid, which would be like R two D two. Um, and you're in the middle of this large circular chamber. There's a lot of dark stone in it. It's about thirty meters wide. Uh, there's stone walkways that arc in circular patterns, and you're putting. You're putting the the stone back, uh, and and you have all these other students, and there's this crew, and you're on this starship. You suddenly realize, and uh, uh, then suddenly someone runs into the room and says, "Master Issa, the Mandalorians have breached the hull." And you learn, and you you nod, and you say, "Go, I will hold them here." And the and all of your students in there start to protest. But you're not accepting any arguments, and in a moment, uh, they all run off and they leave you alone. And uh, you've got the li a lightsaber sitting on the stone in front of you. And soon you're hearing the sounds of combat, and a pack of armored warriors suddenly burst into the chamber. You look at them calmly and you say, "I do not seek a fight," but they howl and they just leap at you with their weapons drawn. You just wait on them calmly, and then your lightsaber flies into your hand, and it ignites, and you spring forward, and then the vision is over. Aww. Then you hear some last words. I wanted to words. mess them up. You hear some last words from Val that say, Do not follow my example. Jedi cannot retreat from the world. They must struggle, succeed, and fail with the rest of the galaxy. And then the vision's over, and you're back in the room with everyone else. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to tell everybody what I just saw. Okay. Look, don't, don't be embarrassed if you just fell asleep for a little bit. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Narcolepta hut. <laughs> right. And we bet we've already kind of played over tonight. That's probably a good place to stop. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll try to iron out the technical details next time. Uh, we should have those all ironed out by the next time we play. And we'll see, Andrew. If you're running Firefox, you should be able to run without having to go into the to the. Um, yeah, I know. That was the weird part is yeah. that I could hear all you guys perfectly well. Uh, I will just say in the past, I've always. It's been hit and miss with audio through Firefox. I had to switch to Chrome to get it to work all the t consistently. So I, I will say Firefox is hit and miss sometimes. It's roll twenty. 
if you're trying to go through that well. So. Yeah, I found the same. I mean, the Safari just doesn't work at all. No. Yeah. Do you run on a Mac? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you run on a Mac. That's that's probably also contributing. Do they have Chrome on the Mac? Mm. No, I, I think stars. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'd sorry. Yeah, not, not in not in Michael's parlance, but Google Chrome. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shut off the stream. Uh, th thanks for sticking with us, those of you who did, and uh, we'll be back probably in a couple of weeks. And then I'm going to, then we'll hand out, uh, after I do that, we'll hand out uh, XP and stuff. Cool.